Hey guys, Andy here, and welcome to a brand new episode of Andy Talks Navy. And in today's episode, we're going to be doing a reaction video to the Navy Sonar Technician video recently put out by the America's Navy channel. Um, it's kind of an offshoot of the official U.S. Navy channel, where they basically show off different uh, little short videos showing off different facets of the American Navy. So they got a lot of videos showing off what the different rates do. And I've been waiting for this one, waiting to do a reaction video to this one. And they also have one for AM, which is uh, aviation mechanic. So JT, if you're watching this, love to see your reaction video to your rate as well. So just kind of putting that out there. But anyway, we're going to be doing a reaction video to my rate, which was STG. Um, they explain this in the video, but there's two types of sonar techs, and uh, there's STGs, which is on surface ships, and there's STSs, which are on subs. And in most of the like military videos and movies and stuff you see, whenever you see sonar techs, um, I've yet to see an STG. It's always STSs. Um, so in any event, <laughs> that's enough rambling for now. Let's get on with the video. All right, guys, so here we are, Navy Sonar Technician from the America's Navy Channel. Let's begin. Deep blue ocean. Oh man, I'm hearing biologics already. Noise, noise. What's that? Why does it look so green? <laughs> That's funny looking. ST. Yeah, it's not our technician. So, yep, yeah, that's a, it's a cruiser, it looks like. So, I was on a destroyer and a frigate. So, um, just to give you guys a quick heads up, the sonar systems on each of the ships is a little different. So, uh, my guess is that they're going to show off different uh, platforms and stuff. So, but anyway, this one's a cruiser. Yep. Okay, so this dude, um, and again, this might be a different setup for a cruiser. I've never been on a cruiser, so I don't know. But just looking at it, um, looks like he's in combat and not in sonar control. <laughs> Um, he's looking through, like, the different nodes and stuff. You see the top stack. Uh, I don't know what the fuck he's doing on passive, though. It's all streaky. They might have blurred it out for classified reasons. I don't know. But anyway, let's continue. Yeah, boy. That's me. That's the subs version. Yeet. <laughs> And this is this is combat information center, by the way. So th that dude, the lieutenant, right in the middle, he's probably TAO right now. Um, he's at the TAO stack. Well, actually, technically, there's one up front too. Um, yeah, I, my guess is they're probably going to show a lot of stuff in combat. Which for sonar, um, we have uh, surface watch, which uh, ma mainly stood by someone in weapons department. Um, they have a little area. In combat and we also have our own uh, stack in combat as well that we stand for certain situations not always but certain and then this dude's looking down uh, looks like FLIR um, which is a little camera out there it lets them track stuff on the surface so and then this guy uh, again these these stacks look a little different so it's similar to what I've used, but it's set up a little differently. Um, yeah. That's true. Yeah, that's very true. I'm sorry I'm stopping so much in the video. Uh, if you want to watch the full video, I'll have a link in the description and pin something in the comments as well. But I, this video is only like two minutes long, and there's like so many little points to go through. So, <laughs> you know, I just want to make sure I get through them all. But anyway... Uh, yeah, uh, radar does not go in the water. Um, only sonar does that. So, you know, when it comes to anything under the surface, uh, that's all us, man. So, you know, we're kind of stars of the show when it comes to ASW, anti-submarine warfare. Um, communicating with combat, letting them know about underwater contacts. Um, during um, GQ, you know, for set can do, uh, condition 2AS... It's usually uh, like there's a possible submarine near us. Um, <clears throat> we're in charge of obviously tracking the contact, um, determining if it is a submarine, and uh, coordinating with, uh, you know, 
uh, friggin' Seahawks, the hel- helicopters, um, making sure they drop um, either sonar buoys or uh, possibly a torpedo if need be, depending on the situation. Um, but we're all kind of at the center of all that. Yeah. Yeah, and that's another thing that people don't uh, consider is um, passive sonar. You know, when most people think of sonar, they think of like the bing, bing, you know, that that whole thing. That's active. Um, we do most of our tracking through, um, through passive. Um, active is only when we for sure have a contact, you know, or at least pretty sure, and we just want to track it actively. But there's there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. You know, you got for you know making sure that frequencies don't mesh with each other, and also you got to worry about uh, disturbing biologics and stuff like that because that's that's a big thing the Navy does take very seriously. You know, it's a lot of safety precautions and using active sonar. So you know, we only use it <laughs> in very select situations you know whether it's testing out the gear or during exercises or if something happens you know obviously we want to use it but um you know uh, we make sure that we're not disturbing the biologics in the area you know whales and dolphins and stuff uh, or at least keeping it to a minimum so i just want to just want to put that out there because i know there's a lot of uh groups out there that are against you know the military using active sonar because it it upsets whale migration and stuff like that, which is true. But you know we have a more um, no pun intended we have a more active approach to it now with regards to safety. So I just want to just want to put that out there. So yeet. Uh, damn, our GQ already. Shit, son. Okay, yeah, this is uh, STS right here. I think. Can't read the name tag, um, but he's got dolphins on, so I'm assuming. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that dude's kind of an old school sonar tech. He was like me when I was on the frigate, because you could actually like go and listen to stuff that way. But a lot of people, they just use what's on the screen and stuff like that, so... Yeah. Yeah, if it's a ship, they're loud as fuck. So, they're not hard to miss. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> again, sorry for the, the frequent pauses, but again, there's, there's a lot of information to cover in such a short amount of time. So, uh, give you guys a little sea story here. Um, when we were out at the Great Barrier Reef off the coast of Australia... Um, for those who don't know, the Great Barrier Reef is the largest collection of marine wildlife in the world. Um, and it was kind of shallow where we were at, so we were at restricted maneuvering. So we couldn't really do much of anything until we pulled in the port a couple of days later. Um, so we were out there just kind of out and about, and uh, we turned on WQC2 to listen to uh, the stuff going on um, in the water, and we'd heard like so many different biologics. You know, we heard like humpback whales, dolphins, seals, um, just all kinds of different stuff. Maybe some snap and shrimp, I think. I don't know. It was just a lot of stuff, but it was just a lot of biologics in the area. <laughs> and it was kind of cool to like listen to them in sonar, sh- in, uh, sonar control. Um, we'd even have people come in visiting, being like, Whoa, what are you guys listening to? It's so crazy. You <laughs> know, like, Yeah, it's, it's all outside. So, that was one of the the fun moments of uh, of being a sonar tech is to get a chance to listen to all that you know instead of just like slapping on a a moods mixtape or something like that get to hear it in real time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it depends on the platform, but yeah. A lot of this, yeah, yeah. A lot of this, the setup is uh, is a little different than what I'm used to. I think this is. Uh, I'm honestly surprised they showed sonar control because they're very secretive about that sort of thing. But you know, this is uh, 
This looks like uh, what I saw on uh, on the destroyer. Very similar in setup and stuff. Um, so yeah, I had a first class. <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, <laughs> yep, definitely know that frame and all that stuff. Um, this is definitely on a destroyer. I don't know why that dude had the keyboard open, by the way. So, yeah, back in combat again. JOs and stuff, you know. Looking through Fleer for reasons. I don't know, maybe he's staying at Surface Watch or some shit. I don't know. But, yeah. I don't know, I don't know why they so show so much Fleer Watch, because, like, that's kind of sort of part of sonar, but it's a very obscure part, so I don't know. So yeah, that was my reaction video to the Navy Sonar Technician video from the America's Navy uh, YouTube channel. I'll be sure to put a link to that video in the description as well as pinned in the comments so you guys can check out the video for yourself. It's only like two minutes and some change long, and uh, there's a lot of good talking points, which is why I paused a lot of parts in the video because they were just showing off a bunch of bunch of stuff really quickly so it was like play two seconds stop play two seconds stop <laughs> and um anyway uh really look forward to potentially seeing jt's reaction to his own rate video which is up there am so um jt if you're watching this looking forward to it and uh if you're not be sure to ping jt and let him know about it so if you guys have any questions or anything like that or videos you want me to react to that involve the Navy, the military, whatever, uh, be sure to leave me a little something something in the comments down below, in the booby de boop and I'll do my best to, uh, to get to them. Um, I really do enjoy doing these uh, Navy videos, and I want to continue doing more. So, any event, uh, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.